Jerry Liu Gaming. This is the start of a new series. I'm going to talk to you about some board games and some games that are not virtual that you can play with your friends. So today I'm going to teach you guys a card game that everyone in China plays. So this is called Jie Long also known as Connect the Dragon or Connecting the Dragon. So I'll teach you guys how to play this. It's a very fun game, four or three players. I'm sure if you do the math, you could play with more than four players, but you have to do the math yourself. I'm not a math channel currently. So let's learn how to play. General setup of this game. First of all, you take out the jokers. The cards are evenly split between the players. In China, people take from the center of the table, but in America, usually there's a dealer and the dealer deals. So you deal all the cards evenly between the players. That means, guys, if there's one fewer player than four, so if there's three, you take out a card. If you're playing with four players, you can split the deck evenly, but if you're playing with three players, you have to take out a card. I recommend taking out an ace. So now you have your hand. I recommend, because you will connect your dragons by suit. Separate your hand by suit. So for example, put all your diamonds together, put all your spades together, put all your clubs together, and put all your hearts together. So you separate your deck by suit. I recommend you put it in sequential order. For example, here I got my seven, my queen, and my king of diamonds. Here I got my six, my seven of spades, etc. You get your hand, you separate it by suit, then you put your suits into sequential order numerically. Don't show this to your buddies that you're playing with, of course. This is a competitive game. At the end of the game, or you could play this multi-round, so at the end of however many rounds, you count the number of points a player has. Whoever has the most points loses Whoever has the fewest points wins. Now, how do you accumulate points? How does the play-by-play -play go? The game begins with the sevens. Whoever has the seven of clubs goes first, and then you guys decide whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Next up, we connect the dragon. So, let's say the first player puts down a seven. If you have an eight of spades or a six of spades, you can connect it. So the next player has a six of spades or if he has an eight of spades, he can connect it. If you don't have a spade, you can put down another seven if you have a seven. So let's say the third player has a seven. The fourth player now, if he or she doesn't have a seven, can connect this dragon, so eight of clubs. And then you guys play until a player cannot connect in numerical order. For example, the next player has a 10. Doesn't have any sevens. There's no eight here. There's no nine here for the 10 to connect. So what do you do then? That's when you give yourself points. You pick a card, any card, and you can be strategic about this and I'll talk about this later, but you pick a card that you can't play and you put it down in front of you. So if the player's here, he puts the 10 here. What that means is, that is 10 points counted towards his or her penalty box. And what that also means is because the 10's here, it can't be played on the board anymore. So this 10 is out for the rest of the game. So the penalty points are based on the number on the card. So if you put down a 10, that's 10 penalty points. If you put down a jack, that's 11 penalty points. You put down an ace, that's one penalty point. If you don't have any cards to connect, there's some strategic element. You could just put down very low cards like aces because those count very little towards your penalty. But for example, if you have a 10 of spades and you don't have any more cards bigger than that, then you putting down a 10 as a penalty messes up anyone that has a jack, a queen, and a king. So by strategically giving yourself 10 penalty points, you force the rest of the board to have 11, 12, and 13 penalty points either distributed or one person unluckily has all of them. So that's one strategic element in this game. The other strategic element is how you play and connect. For example, look at this board right now. Let's pretend I'm a player that has an eight and I don't have any cards after the eight. Well, it's not my incentive now 
to play the eight because all I'm doing is helping other players get their cards. So it's my incentive to find other cards to play. Let's say I have a five here. If I put down a five, let's say I don't have a four, three, or two, or one, other players will be able to put down the four, three, two, or one, but at least those penalty points are not worth as much as if I put down an eight and I let other people play the nine, 10, 11, etc. That's another strategy element in this game is if you have the right cards, what do you play so that you can maximize the potential for other people to give themselves penalty points because they can't connect the cards. So guys, that's how you play Long. One card at a time until the last person gets rid of his or her last card. And the point is you want to have as few points in your own penalty deck as possible. You can play multiple rounds, five rounds, ten rounds, three rounds, etc. Add up the total number of penalty points. The fun is trying to not get yourself penalized, but also trying to get other people to penalize themselves. And then how do you strategically release cards if you have the right cards? There's other variations I can teach you guys in the future. But that's the basics about how to play Zilong Connect the Dragon. Alright guys. Jerry Gaming, and this was our first episode on how to play certain board games, certain card games, etc. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.